Hello, and welcome back to Sci-Tai Tech. So, what would happen if you were to combine a CFL and a flyback transformer? What would you get? You will get high voltage. I'm going to show you how to get high voltage from a flyback transformer and using a CFL driver. Let's get started. <laughs> First, what I'm going to do is put the flyback transformer to the side, and I'm going to go and open up the CFL to pull out the circuit so I can be able to use the circuit as the driver to power the flyback transformer to be able to get those high voltage arcs. There we go, you just take it apart just like that, snip the wires. There you go, and now you have that bulb that you can use for future projects. And here is the circuit that you're going to use as a driver to power the flyback transformer. Okay, so now let's take a look at this circuit a little closer. It's going to be one of the two of the four wires to be able to power the circuit. It could be the two front, or it could be the two ones on the back. I'm assuming it's the two front because of those two capacitors, so it should be the correct ones. Well, let's test it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the insulation on the two wires that connects to AC or to mains. There we go. And okay, so now we are ready to use the flyback transformer. As you can see, there are these 10 pins that are on the flyback transformer, and as well as the suction cup. Now, in order to connect your CFL driver, these two pins are usually the ones that you want to use to connect your CFL driver to. I think it's going to be these two center wires or it could be the two end wires to connect to those two pins. And then you take an alligator clip, connect it to the suction cup, and then you raise the other end to one of these pins. One of these pins will arc to that alligator clip and then that way you'll know where the high voltage is coming from. Now of course if you want you can always create a schematic just like this and test all of the pins to see which two pins have the higher resistance. Usually the pins that have the highest resistance are the ones that will connect to your CFL driver. Now I'm going to use a multimeter and I'm going to use the probe to connect to each pin to see which two pins have the highest resistance and then you just mark it down on a piece of paper. So you just go to each pin just like this and you do this with all the pins as you can see it's the first two pins that has the highest resistance that's what you want to connect your CFL driver to okay so now I have my alligator clips and I'm going to connect it to the suction cup of my flyback transformer and I'm going to use that to check each one of these pins to see which one it arcs to. But first, let's go ahead and power up the CFL driver. And I have my plug that's going to connect to the AC voltage or to mains. And now I'm going to connect it to the first two wires. I believe those two. I believe those two center wires are the ones that I need to use to power this flyback transformer. Let's see if I'm right. Yellow is connected to the yellow. And the white is connected to the white one. All right, now it's plugged in. Let's see which pin will arc to the suction cup. Okay, so let's see which one will arc. Not that pin, not that one, 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 and not that one. Hmm, 
Looks like it, it, uh, hmm, it looks like it doesn't work. Hmm, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. And I'm gonna disconnect the two center pins and connect them on two side pins. I believe that will now work. Unplug everything so that way you don't shock yourself. Very important note to remember. Okay, so now I believe it's these two pins. The two center ones are incorrect. Now let's go plug it in and try again. Ah, there we go. And there we have it, it arcs. See if it arcs to the other ones. Nope, it does not arc to any of the other ones. Only to that one. Those arcs looked pretty nice, but I think I can power it up with using this capacitor. This 1.6 kilovolt capacitor should make the arcs much longer and increase the power. But, an but a very important note you should know that when doing this, it can increase the heat of your flyback transformer. So it's not really a good idea unless you put it into some kind of coolant, like oil or something. So what I'm going to do is just connect it directly to those two jumper cables and put them on the two pins right there. There we go. By connecting through AC through the capacitor like that should actually make the arcs much longer and bigger. So let's go ahead and test that out. Ah, there you go. The arcs are much bigger. To me that looks about two and a half to three centimeters long, so I believe this should be at least 25,000 to 30,000 volts, which is, hey, really cool. Let's have a closer look at that. And there you have it. Now you know how to power a flyback transformer with using a CFL driver circuit. It's very important to use a 26 watt CFL circuit because if you use anything lower than that and you try using that capacitor to make the higher arcs and higher voltage, it will actually cause your CFL circuit to actually blow up or burn or smoke or catch fire. So don't do that. Use a 26 watt CFL circuit and that will actually be strong enough to handle such high power and such high heat. This particular circuit did not overheat and there was no damage, but however the flyback transformer did get very hot and I was actually kind of concerned that I might have actually melted it or going to melt it or it was going to combust. So please take caution when you're dealing with things like this because things can overheat. Of course if you wanted you could take the flyback transformer and put it into a little tub of oil and I would actually uh, keep it cool. So there you have it. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Sci-Tai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.